All right, so here's the build that I used to do this week's master challenge for Crota's End, which is the Ear Ute encounter. Uh, um, I've already done a video for my Warlock and my Hunter this week, but I actually completed it first on my Titan. Um, I just didn't manage to get the video up yet. So here it is. Uh, this is just like my Hunter, same principle behind the build. Basically the same weapon, the same purpose is to do raw damage output. Um, and I can do so by matching the surge of the activity. If I can find um, the modifiers here for Crota Zen on Master, you can see this week is Arc and Strand Surge. Of course we have overcharged weapons, Glaive, that's a non-factor. Um, so depending on the, on the week that you're doing this, uh, the surges may be different in, you know, for example, four weeks time when I guess this, um, encounter will be up for challenge again. Um, so I guess the name of the, of the challenge is equal vessels, um, which, yeah, I, I don't know what the names are. It's just the ear Ute challenge, but, um, basically it knocks the triumph for two off of your, um, off of your title and um, you get adept guaranteed adept raid weapons for completing the challenge each week on each character so you can get a grand total of three adept weapons per week just for do just for doing the challenge three times one time on each character um, that is you can't farm it more than that that's that's your limit right so if you're uh, if you only play one character, if you only play Titan, then you're just going to get one Adept Raid weapon per week. Unless you make two other characters that are also Titans, then you've got three Titans. You can go and do it three times and get triple loot, uh, which is a good idea if that's what you're trying to get. Um, and that's basically the only thing that I'm going for. Um, I may look at going for the Crota Zen title, um, just because I don't actually have a Raid title yet the only titles i have are uh conquer i think i'm on my sixth tier of conquer and um i've got the solo flawless titles or the solo the the dungeon titles sorry um as well as the solo flawless emblems for duality spire the watcher and ghost of the deep so um yeah to each their own whatever you like um but i do i think crota's end is probably my favorite raid so far to have released since I started playing um, Destiny 2 in, during the Witch Queen era. Um, so I didn't get super into Vow. Um, I did get into King's Fall pretty heavily, but I didn't really get into Master King's Fall. And then uh, Root of Nightmares. I, I, so I've just gradually gotten more and more into raids over the last uh, two years that I've been playing Destiny. Um, and I do all this on LFG, and you will see LFG gameplay at the end of this build overview. Um, but basically, I just want those adept raid weapons because, especially since Root of Nightmares, since the release of Lightfall, now adept raid weapons are actually viable they're more viable than crafted weapons because pre-lightfall there was really no reason to go for adept uh, vow or adept king's fall weapons when you could just literally craft a better version with enhanced perks now you can actually um, level up your adept weapons and you can enhance them Right, so like you can either spend resources to level up uh, the weapon, or you can just go, you know, get a whole bunch of kills or do a sure chi checkpoint, level it up uh, up to level 20 to bump up the stats, and then that'll give you access to all of the um, enhanceable perks. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, but the point is, you can turn these two perks that you're given by rolling the dice, just by getting the weapon. You can't change these perks, but you can enhance them. So if I wanted to, I can put Enhance Swashbuckler on here. And by the way, you can also change the barrels at the crafting table. The barrels and the mag options, like these two first columns, you will have, uh, you will have all available options. Not just these four that you see here, you will have all available options. Um, options 
which so yeah it's actually fairly customizable other than the two perks which are only um which you can only enhance um but yeah so i'm just kind of doing these uh, master challenges um to get good loot but also because i enjoy the challenge um and i enjoy putting builds together to do end game pve activities um I, I just that's that's what I like doing in this game. I like nerding out over stats and builds and uh, weapons and uh, creative loadouts wherever possible, um, or just effective loadouts, uh, loadouts for different purposes. Whether it's doing you know raw damage output, DPS, burst damage, uh, support or hybrid, just a little bit of both. Um, so yeah. So for this Titan build, this is a raw damage output build, basically because I am swapping to Curious of the Falling Star for my damage loadout. So just like my Hunter and Titan, I've got two loadouts to switch between. One, loadout A is for collecting armor charge, collecting orbs of power, farming ammo, farming my super. Um, and then loadout B is for damage, which is going to uh, basically transform a lot of those mods that were designed for creating orbs and generating ammo. And instead, I'm going to replace all that with uh, mods that are going to enhance my weapon gameplay. Uh, so targeting mods, reloaders, dexterity, unflinching triple arc weapon surge mods for 22% more damage and then double time dilation to um, give give me about 18 seconds per armor charge and I should have full three stacks of armor charge when I enter damage phase if I switch my loadout right before uh, starting damage phase which I usually do when finishing a witch um, because that's a good time to swap your loadout because you're safe during the animation generally speaking. Um, so yeah, I'll basically almost have a full minute worth of, uh, surges, and then that's even without picking up orbs off my teammates, which I will be doing anyway, so I'll never really run out of, uh, surge mods, but it is just generally a good idea to, to, um, to set up two loadouts for boss encounters in dungeons and raids, especially if there is, like, uh, especially if there's a, a matter of uh, like survivability and um, a need to do a lot of damage, like in a master raid, is more important than say a normal raid, because uh, you're you're taking a lot more damage. You're, you you need to build into survivability, but at the same time, you need to build into the maximum amount of damage. Um, otherwise, you'll enrage the boss if you don't damage the boss enough. And you will get wiped. Um, so you need the best of both worlds. And it's just generally a good idea to set up two loadouts like this. Um, yeah. So for loadout A, I'm using... Actually, here, I'll go into my abilities. Because this stuff has to stay the same between both loadouts. Namely, the aspects and fragments. And your super. Um... Obviously, if you switch from Thunder Crash to Fist of Havoc, then you'll just lose your super completely. So you'll be without a super when you go to start your damage phase, which is not good. Um, so you, it has to be T-Crash on both. Also, the aspects and the fragments all need to be identical, in identical order as well. So if they are not the same and if they are not in, that, in this exact same order, when you switch loadouts, you will lose all of your abilities you will lose everything you will lose super uh class ability your melee your grenade you will have nothing so i keep these two loadouts here uh reserved for the activity that i'm about to go into right so if i'm gonna sit down for some game time tonight um and i'm gonna go do a master ear ute encounter which is what i'm doing here i'm gonna go and find my Curse of the Falling Star build with the proper armor for the proper stats. I'm going to copy it over to here. And I'm going to put my Heart of the Most Light build that I have down here. I'm going to copy it over to there um, or one or the other. And then I'm going to basically make sure I have the exact same aspects and fragments on both. And then uh, I'm just switching up the mods, right? So basically my mods look identical and almost every but, uh, 
in almost every dungeon raid or boss encounter situation where we have um, unlocked loadouts where we are able to switch our loadouts this is the same basic setup that i use pretty much all the time loadout a um the one for farming orbs and ammo has to have a finisher mod so a yellow finisher mod uh, just to give armor charge a function which is going to allow me to actually get armor charge because uh, if you don't have that you will never get any armor charge um, and if I do need, I can I can use that finisher. Uh, you know, if I'm about to die, then I can finish an enemy and get my health back. And it only consumes um, it only consumes one armor charge to use healthy finisher, as you can see here. Unlike all kickstart mods, unlike all other finisher mods that consume all of your armor charge, or at least three stacks. Um, so yeah, so like for my Warlock build, because I was on Divinity and Special Ammo was critical, I used Special Finisher instead. So I was giving my setup loadout a, func a function for armor charge, so that I can get armor charge, but it was also um, it was also useful so for me to get, get ammo when I need it, right? But basically it's just to give armor charge a function, plain and simple. Um, weapons I'm using here are similar to my hunter loadout. Um, Wish Ender, like I stated for my hunter build, it's if you're going to be on a build that is just kind of focused into damage output, um, I think regardless of that, it's nice to, especially when you're on doing LFG and joining random fire teams, it's nice to bring something to the table as far as a support option. Um, so the arc subclass that I'm on doesn't offer anything to my teammates um, because it's just 100% focused on damage, uh, which you could argue that that does benefit your fire team because you're helping, you know, you, you're basically carrying the damage so that you can help your fire team successfully complete the encounter without wiping. Uh, but everybody wants to do as much damage as they can right so it's not necessarily like a selfless thing to be building into pure damage and nothing to support your teammates uh like you could do on like a solar subclass with a healing grenade or a well of radiance or a banner of war on titan right so th this is not that build but i am carrying wish ender that way i can offer to go and scout the towers for my teammates uh, so that I can call out where the wizards are um, so that that is my support job right so I'm bringing that as a means of support um, then the other weapons I'm using here which stay the same on both loadouts except I think I switched from wish Ender to osteo uh, for damage just to be just in case like I ran out of storm chaser or whatever and I wanted to get some poison tick damage off on the boss then I could just um, shoot osteo for a couple of seconds until the poisons poison is applied and then switch to um, my fusion rifle um, but during setup I'm using wish ender um, storm chaser firing line rapid hits this is going to be extremely snappy fast reloads uh, firing line on storm chaser is the best I, I would say it's just generally the best uh, damage option on a Divinity Bubble, on your Ute. Uh, Precision-based weapons are the favorite um, for the Ear Ute encounter, unlike Crota, which is swords or melee builds. Uh, your Ute is a dodgy wizard, so rockets aren't really practical. Um, Precision-based weapons are. And because Arc is surging this week, Arc and Strand specifically, it means that all that all Arc weapons are doing 25% more damage, um, which is going to basically put this ahead of other weapons like Sleeper Simulant, Leviathan's Breath, um, even Briar's Contempt with Surrounded. And Surrounded is like nearly a 50% damage buff which is doable on your Ute. In fact, I always use Briar's Contempt with Surrounded on your Ute uh, for normal uh, for normal your Ute, uh, like just on normal Crota Zen difficulty. 
And if solar was surging, then obviously I would use briars. Um, but you could use briars if you want. It's just that you're getting, with firing line, that's 20%, right? Which pales in comparison to surrounded at 50%. But I'm also getting 25% from arc surging this week, where, it was, where briars is not. And on top of that, when you add in monochromatic maestro, that is another 10 or 15%. Somebody needs to tell me what those what the values are because I don't know, but I know it's at least 10%. So you're getting another 10% damage uh, by using a weapon that matches your subclass. So 20% from firing line, 25% from arc surge, and then um, another 10 or 15% from monochromatic maestro, right? Not counting not counting the 22% that I will be getting from triple arc weapon surge mods, but I'm not, I'm not including that in the comparison because obviously if I was running briars, I would also use triple solar surge, right? So that's kind of a non-factor. The major difference here is the weekly surge. Um, and so Midas Reckoning would, this is also uh, because it's craftable with surrounded right now high impact fusion rifles are the uh, from what I've heard and seen high impact fusion rifles are the best frame for fusion rifles for total damage output and basically for DPS alongside rapid fire uh, frames like iterative loop or riptide uh, or Cartesian coordinate um, so Basically, high impacts and rapid fires are very similar in their DPS, but high impacts are, offer more damage per, you know, for the total amount of ammo that you have. Total damage. Um, that's just for like, that's just comparing high impacts to rapid fires. But now you can take into consideration that Midas Reckoning can roll with enhanced surrounded and cornered. So both of these are going to work together in tandem to increase fire rate and I believe increase fire rate, right? Faster charge time or draw time when surrounded. So this is going to up my DPS. Surrounded is a huge damage buff. It is very situational, but your Ute, in my experience, is, is a good encounter for having surrounded. Um, you, you're just... You, enemies are going to be all around you all the time in your well in your face punching you hitting you 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 will be surrounded um, so if i do need to use this i have a lot of damage potential here um, more so than the current meta uh, quotation uh, meta um, loaded question and the aramite and ox perennial those three fusion rifles are all the hype right now because they roll with the relatively new perk control burst as well as uh, envious assassin so you can basically do like a whole mag dump without reloading on those weapons and controlled burst is a 20 percent damage buff so very good they are good but this is one of this is a fusion rifle that is definitely slept on because it is also high impact and it is a way bigger damage buff than controlled burst And you, you do have the you do have the option with runneth over to overflow the mag as well, which I didn't even really um, didn't even really consider. But even if you have to reload, this thing is doing big big damage. I always run it actually like if I'm on an arc subclass on Crota using Bequest with um, enhanced surrounded, then I will couple it with my Des Reckoning, try and dump off all of my Bequest ammo in a single damage phase and then uh, have some time to swap over to Midas. So yeah, that's basically the build. Um, Curious, you know, obviously I'm switching to Curious to the Falling Star because uh, that's just like a massive, massive damage buff to your T-Crash. You end up doing like half a million damage just from your T-Crash alone. Um, so it's very good. And I did do a boss builds video um about a week ago uh showcasing heart of the most light 
and how it should be used now that it's in the current sandbox, like two seasons after it's been nerfed, right? And after storm grenades have been nerfed into the ground, um, Heart of Immortal Light is still very, very viable um, exotic to use. And I'm not just saying that because I'm not just saying that as like a, you know, just a general gameplay exotic for setting up because like obviously that's what I'm using it for here. I'm just using it to kill ads, get orbs, get armor charge, uh, use my abilities, right? Uh, but it is, it is viable for boss damage, uh, 100%. In fact, you would probably be better to reverse the order here and do your setup with Curus, um, and then after you cast your, your T-Crash, and get that curious damage then you swap to heart of the most light with triple arc surge mods and all that because um, then you can spam abilities at the same time like basically every time you reload storm chaser you'll be able to throw another pulse grenade do another thunderclap uh, and, and another dodge um, it might be a lot might might be a waste of time to be throwing abilities that much instead of just doing storm chaser damage but pulse grenades are big damage with touch of thunder Um, and you get like you get like a ton of ionic traces as the pulse grenade is doing damage to the boss. Um, along with magnitude, it makes the grenade last longer. So you can literally throw back-to-back -back pulse grenades um, before before the pulse grenade is even done ticking. You will be able to throw another pulse grenade. Um, so I have used Heart of the Most Light in Master Raid contents, like on War Priest, I believe I used it. Um, so you could definitely do it, um, but it's just kind of it, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird to go from T from to go from Curus into Heart of the Most Light. Um, it'd be kind of like going from Star Eater Scales into Foe Tracer, right? I, it would be a similar thing. I don't know. You'd be losing out a little bit on your setup by using T crash unless you set up three loadouts, which is just really kind of a pain. And quite frankly, I don't like switching loadouts once damage is started. I'd rather switch loadouts before damage starts because it is just too slow on console in my experience. Press options, go to there, switch to there, exit out. Like I just wasted like two seconds swapping my loadout. Uh, and in those two seconds, I could have been doing damage. So, yeah, still, I think it's probably just better to go um, go from Hoyle into um, Curus for damage. But, it, like, it, like I said, it wouldn't be bad either way you go. Even if you wanted to just do the whole thing with Heart of the Most Light, you'd still be able to put up, pump out a lot of damage uh, with those pulse grenades. So, yeah, that's the build. The um, I got another Abyss Defiant this week um, on my Titan Outlaw Swashbuckler. I got Zen Swashbuckler, unfortunately. Well, I, you know, to be honest, I was thinking about um, either farming for or just crafting a Swashbuckler Abyss Defiant for, uh, you know what, for Bonk Titan, right? Um, because obviously if I'm on Bonk Titan, everything's just going to be getting bonked. So Swashbuckler is going to be like constant uptime, and that is a big damage buff. It's like 35% or 33% extra damage. Um, so I do have I do have some Grave Robber Swashbuckler weapons that I've crafted just for my Bonk uh, Titan builds. Uh, so yeah, I may... Obviously I haven't deleted them yet for a reason... But yeah, I may do something with one of these. I'm not a huge fan of Outlaw or Zen Moment per se, but Swashbuckler is not bad and it is niche, like I said, for certain builds. So anyways, I'll leave you to the gameplay and uh, yeah, hopefully that helps you this week. And in the meantime, I'm going to start working on probably uh, doing my GMs. Uh, I've got to do Light Blade. Since Light Blade is in rotation this week, I'll probably just focus on a build or two for farming Light Blade because the loaded question is up this week. And so you can get yourself an adept loaded question, which is a viable 
uh, generally more useful fusion rifle than Midas Reckoning, despite Midas being uh, a little bit more of a beast than Loaded Question. Loaded Question will be good in more scenarios, uh, generally speaking. Yep, I'll leave you to it. See you in the next one. Okay, you said st you said I'm grab stones grabbing one this time, a wizard. Okay, so uh, Joda's got to grab one now. Okay. Okay, and then uh, bottom left. I'm gonna go bottom left. I'm going in right now. No, I'm I'm bottom left. I'm already weakening. Uh. Okay. Okay. Mine's dead. Mine's dead. Halfway, then we're all right.
I ha <coughs> okay. Uh. Okay, it's gonna be top right for me. Watch out for those guys. Three quarters. Okay, grab. Okay, I'm going in right now. Dead. Got her. Nuker. Oh! For how scuffed that started, that's not bad. I think... Uh, yeah. We might... We only need like two seconds worth of damage to finish her. Yeah, I'm gonna go scout. Okay. Nothing on right tower. Okay. Left tower. Yep, both left towers. Top and bottom. Okay, stone's gonna go to uh, left tower. Uh, Jota's gonna have to do damage uh, to a wizard too. Okay. You can go, uh, yeah, go bottom left, I'll go top left. Okay, stone is. Got it. Okay. Actually, uh, come with me, Jota. Let's just go over there. Oh, no, because you need to get enlightened anyways. Shit. Yeah, let's just... Grab it. No, I got bottom left. And somebody already got top left as well. Nice. Did... Two Abyss Defiance with Swashbuck right now. Whatever. Actually, it would be good on Bonk.
Well, I don't have the CP anymore, but I need to do this on Warlock and uh, Hunter as well. I mean, if you got to do it again, but I have to find the CP. <laughs> no, that was good. Thank you, guys.